Hello everyone, it is week three of my personal collection video. I've been showing a lot of vintage books as well, things that I'm just re, you know, reboarding, putting in Mylar, putting in boxes, and a lot of personal collection stuff because I am going to ultimately get rid of all the extra books that I have that I really don't uh, either have room for or just things that I just, you know, I'm just trying to thin the herd, I guess, as you would say. Um, I've been disgruntled as it relates to the industry as a whole. We've talked about that in videos, and I have gotten a tremendous amount of uh, comments about how much people are enjoying these videos. So we're just going to keep it going. So here we are, week three. Uh, we'll show some vintage first, and then we'll jump into some PC books. So first we'll do um, House of Mystery, House of Mystery number 203. Cool cover right there. Avengers 119. Of course, these are in no specific order. They're all in really, you know, upper high grade condition, uh, you know, mid upper. Uh, just things that I have found in boxes. Uh, another House of Mystery. Bernie writes in cover 221, of course. Uh, this is also a PC book. I lo absolutely love that cover. And again, as you know, when it comes to Bernie Wrightson, I'm going to keep it. Dracula 68. Cool cover there. Tool Way, I think 70 was the last issue. So uh, the print runs on the later issues are kind of limited. So very nice high grade copy of that Dracula, uh, Tomb of Dracula number uh, 68. Uh, Witching Hour number 16. Great cover right there. Girl looking in the mirror, getting her hair pulled by somebody. Love that cover. I got a request from a viewer uh, to show more war comics. Um, I have a lot of war comics. So I found a bunch, and they're going to be mixed throughout this video, but I hope you enjoy the war comics. First one up, Men of War, number 25. One of the significant things about Men of War, first time they had a, uh, a black soldier that was kind of front and center on a comic book. Really liked that one right here. Nice cover. It was a good storyline, too. Men of War. Another one of my all-time favorites, I'm sure a lot of you who collect you know, war comics, this is what you're going to be right up here. This is Sergeant Rock, number 368. Of course, the private right there, saving the Sarge. Probably going to get an award for that. Back it up a little bit there. There's that. A book that needs no introduction. Found a high-grade copy of this. This is Killing Joke. First print, super, super high-grade. Uh, they have done so many print runs of this. I think it was up to like maybe, was it 14 or 15 print runs of this book? And it just, people just continue to buy it. And the first print still has a premium uh, price on it. Another uh, war book here, Sergeant Rock, number 308. Of course, the Germans depicted there. Always, you know, they always depicted them as uh, evil people here. So there's that. Of course, the things they did in World War II were very evil. But another, you know, if you're a kid and you're at the 7-Eleven, and you see that book right there, it kind of checks your boxes. One of the covers I always liked, uh, another Sergeant Rock. This is Sergeant Rock 408. Uh, again, these are in really no particular order, so I'm just boxing them, putting them away as I find them. Uh, this is Sergeant Rock 408, and I kind of like this. It was, you know, I drew what war is really like, Rock. And just kind of look on their faces. You can kind of see, you know, the fear in the soldier's eye. Sergeant Rock just kind of looking at it. I like the color scheme. It's just, you know, kind of you know, doll, stuff like that. Really like that. I think this is 1985, but, you know, excellent, excellent cover. One of my favorites right there. Another Sergeant Rock, 356, of course. Sergeant Rock doing what he does best, kicking ass. There he is whipping on some Germans right there. Shirts all ripped, he and Karen. Witching Hour, 42. Love these Witching Hour covers. I believe this is one by Nick Carty. Of course, Nick Carty was real big in the 70s as it relates to horror. So there it is right there. Nice, nice cover. Here's another good cover I like. You know, Bruce, why don't you open the door so I can meet your new friend? I don't think her his new friend wants to meet you, Mom. So there's that right there. Really nice one. And then being a, you know, a vampire fan, we've talked about that a lot here. I'm a big Bella Lugosi fan, the old vampires. Here is a Tomb of Darkness number 12. Dracula getting ready to do some, some work right there. And we have some more books to go through. Let's see what we got here. Just give me a second. I'm putting them back in the boxes as I go. Another nice 
big stackaroo here. We have House of Mystery number 200. Teen Titans number 35. For Forbidden Tales of Dark Mansion number six. Always like that cover right there. And I hope you're enjoying these books. I'm enjoying these books. I can look at these all day long. Uh, Justice League of America, number 108. Really high grade. Nick Cardi on this cover right here. Of course, we love Nick Cardi on this channel. He did a lot of covers that people really didn't understand. Uh, Vault of Evil, number six. This is uh, a Gil Kane cover. War Heroes. This is War Heroes. I don't... 16 or 15, I believe. I can barely see. It's a real tiny number up there. But here's just a really cool book right here. More Japanese themed right there. Uh, this is The Unknown Soldier, number 240. We've talked about this before. Anything that has swastikas on it uh, as it relates to World War II or the Japanese Rising Sun... Um, always sell really, really well. So here's here's one right here with the swastika on the train. Here is a Justice League of America. This is a 100-page giant, number 113. Nice high-grade condition right there. Next up is Thor 158. Of course, this is the origin of Thor retold. Uh, House of Secrets, number 140. I believe this is the origin, possibly first appearance of Patchwork Man. I cannot remember if it is a first appearance, but Patchwork Man right there. We'll do another little stack here. See what we got. The Joker, number four, high grade. Cool cover there. Gotta love the Joker. Plop. Number one, 1973, really, really high grade on this baby right here. Just kind of a funny cover with the long arms and stuff. Action, oh, excuse me, Adventure Comics 435, and they called it Weird Adventure Comics. Another high grade, this is 9496. Super high grade, colors just really pop right there. This is Hulk 108. The red, really, really bright on that right there. Really nice. Uh, you know, it looks like a really high copy. It's only, a, I graded it a five, uh, but still really, really nice looking on that. Again, Mylar makes everything look great as well, too. This is Flash, number 224. Another high grade book right there. Star Wars, number eight. I graded this a nine six. Might even be a nine eight. Uh, really, really nice book. It's hard for me to grade things 9.8 only because, you know, vintage, uh, modern stuff you can grade 9.8, but vintage stuff, but this is like absolutely flawless. Beautiful, beautiful book right there. Frankenstein Monster, number one. Cool cover right there. Love the Frankenstein Monster. I know I have a lot more Frankenstein Monsters I'm going to be showing coming up. Here's another high-grade book right here, 9294, Star Wars number 6, of course. Luke Skywalker having a lightsaber duel with Darth Vader. I remember seeing these as a kid at the 7-Eleven. I couldn't wait for the new Star Wars issue to come out. And I'd plop down my 35 cents and pick up the book. Let's do another stack of vintage. Just kind of get it going there. Oh. Let's see what we got here. Third appearance of Harley Quinn, Batman, Detective Comics, 737, right there. Cool, cool Joker right there. It's not really vintage, but it's, it's older, and it is kind of a, a minor key of being the third appearance of Harley Quinn. Another high grade, Isis number one, 1976. Really nice book right there. They're always talking about they're going to want to do something with Isis. They haven't done it yet, but if they do, I got a number one. Here is Detective Comics, 850, First Gotham City Sirens. 
This book went up for a long time. It was really hot and then it just kind of leveled off, but you know they're going to end up doing something with the Gotham City Sirens. It's just too good of a, you know, group of girls not to do something big. Uh, really famous cover right here. Of course, I know everybody loves this one. You'll see it when you get it. This is Captain America, Captain America Annual Number 8. Boom, right there. The Wolverine Captain America cover. Super high grade. Really, really nice book. Do a few more and then we'll jump in some PC books. This is Black Panther number 15. Got this graded as a high grade, which means it's a really high grade. And this is an Avengers crossover. There it is right there. It's another war comic for everybody. Marine Attack. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can, I can't see the number on this one here. They had the numbers real little on this. I couldn't see it, but this is another one jumping, fighting with the Japanese. A lot of these stories were taking place in the Pacific, of course, where the Marines were fighting the Japanese a lot during World War II. Uh, really, really high grade on this one here. Hard to find these in high grade because, you know, the Charlton paper, super, super cheap. Uh, fighting Navy, and we were talking about, uh, this is Fighting Navy number 122, I believe it is. And of course, this is, we talked about the Rising Sun. There's the Rising Sun right there. Really, really nice book. High grade again, too. Hard to find these in high grade. I found a nice collection a long time ago of these high grade books right here. Uh, this has a lot going for it. Uh, Nick Cardi cover, writes an art on one of the stories. This is the Unexpected 161 right there. 100 page giant. And the last book we'll show as it relates to vintage is Captain Marvel number 13, right there. And that is the vintage for this week's video. Let's jump into some modern books. These are modern PC collection books or books that I wanna keep in my personal collection that are non-vintage. Um, can't show that. Someone complained about me showing a zombie tramp where you know the topless cover one and they complained about it. So I don't wanna offend anybody but it is a really nice cover holding a chainsaw. Uh, I, when I saw this cover in the store, I knew I had to have it for the, for the collection. I love the story. I just had, knew I had to buy a couple of copies of this because this is Canto, number, Canto 2, The Hollow Men. I just I saw that copy, right, that cover, and just fell in love with it. It checks a lot of boxes on the things that I like, and there it is right there. <laughs> Speaking of Gotham City Sirens, this is issue number 12 of that storyline right there, little Black Cat Harley Quinn action. Super high grade again on that. Florida Man. This is, I don't know if I've shown this book or not. I have a few copies of this one here. This is Florida Man number one, a variant cover. If you remember the old Copper Tan commercial, the little girl getting her, you know, the same style with the little dog pulling down her bikini bottom, uh, you know, on the butt. This is done with an alligator. Florida Man, really, really nice on that. You gotta love... I think this is Del Auto. This is Batman number 135. It's a Del Auto cover right there. You know, Poison Ivy's got Batman tied up right there. Really, really cool cover. Really nice looking cover, actually. Uh, kind of things I like right there. Uh, this, of course, Power Girl Special number one, Art Germ. This book sold really, really well when it came out. Money Shot number two. I grabbed this because we talked about Cherry Pop-Tart, who was real popular, I believe, late 70s or in the 70s and 80s. Uh, Money Shot did a little run of with Cherry Pop-Tart on it right there. And I haven't seen this book come out in a while. I like the storyline, and they do some really good homage covers. They did an Archie cover like that. They did a Cherry Pop-Tart. They did a Star Wars. Just really, really cool. Uh, so this is Dark, Dark Multiverse Infinite Crisis number one and i like this just because of the cover it speaks a lot on there you know he's got wonder woman's uh lasso superman's cape batman's uh you know helmet cape he's got you know wonder woman's headband and the green lantern lantern i just liked it i thought it was really cool it's like you know he's sitting there saying who's next so i definitely wanted to grab that this was from asylum press uh this is kind of a zombie cover uh, this is called The Bomb, number one, from Asylum Press. Really cool cover right there. Now let's grab some more modern stuff, shall we? Again, hope you're enjoying these videos. I like doing them. 
Crossed. This is uh, Crossed Badlands. This is number 44 Torture Cover. Right up my alley right there. That girl has zero chance. She's tied up with, bob with rope, getting the bob wire around the neck. Really, really cool. Someone had sent me a message once saying, hey, you keep showing that stuff, what are you, like some sick maniac or something like that? No, I just enjoy the horror genre. And I love print art that depicts, you know, things you would find in a, in a slasher movie. And that's right up the alley right there. So, unfortunately, I don't have a basement or I'd probably keep bodies in it. I'm kidding. Uh, Storyline that I really love when it came out. We talked about this. This was one of the books... When I was doing the uh, weekly videos, when I was telling people things that were coming out, this was one of the books I told people to hit on. It was a three-part series about a cocaine dealer in the 80s based off of a true character. This is Hot Valley Days and Cocaine Nights. This is issue number one. Really hard to find these in high-grade condition. This is issue number two. Of course, there is a topless version of this as well. Uh, we're, you know, same thing, doing the cocaine off of the, the chest, but it doesn't have the cover. It's a nude variant. Uh, that sells for really good money. And then this is the third one. This is the lowest print of the three, which is right here. They only had one top. They only had one topless version of this cover, of these covers, the three covers, and it was the second one with the cocaine on the chest. Uh, all the other ones were just really, really nice covers. Uh, this is kind of a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle homage. This is Canto to the Hollow Men. This is issue one, and this was a retailer initiative. Right there, really cool cover. One of my favorite storylines. Another one we talked about a lot on this channel because I just love the story and then it just ended. And I was really disappointed because I was really, you know, uh, put into the characters. And that's another reason why I kind of got frustrated. A lot of the good storylines just end for, for no reason. And so that's She Bites, number one. You can see the little vampire right there uh, coming down. If you don't know what the storyline is, a uh, little vampire who's like 150 years old, but she looks like she's eight and she can't go outside at night. So she has to get a babysitter so she can do her mean things. Got some more modern books here. The Closet. This was a 1 in 25 exclusive. That was just a cool cover. I mean, as a kid, when you have nightmares about things in the closet, things under the bed, this kind of checks, checks those boxes right there. Really, really cool. Uh, she Bites issue number three. There's the vampire. There's her babysitter right there. Who's terrified of her, obviously. Ice Cream Man. This is Ice Cream Man number 24. They come out with some really creepy covers of Ice Cream Man, as you know, especially the earlier issues. And that's just kind of creepy, his look, handing the kids ice cream. A Belladonna that I cannot show. She Bites number two. They're cruising around on the little Vespa having fun. Well, the little vampire's having fun. Again, the babysitter's absolutely terrified. Tarot, Curse of the, uh, Curse of, uh, Witch of the Black Rose right there. Really cool covers on those. There's one there. Really nice cross cover here. This is crossed. This is the Get Infected. This was a, a cross day exclusive right here. Always like that one. American flag and there's that. Maybe one more little stack of books. One more little stack. There's another crossed right there. Cross comes out with some really mean covers. A lot of people didn't really understand how wicked some of those covers are. And following this channel or going to the shop where I'm selling books. Uh, you know, a fan numbers where I have a case there, uh, I put the cross stuff in there and people are just snapping that up because some of the covers are just really nasty and wicked in nature. And I'm going to show a lot more of those. I have a ton of crossed to show. Uh, Vampironica New Blood sitting on a pumpkin. Nice virgin cover right there. Another Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose. Just 
a really nice cover right there. The tarot. Tarot, like I say, comes out with some really nice covers. Okay, let me show that. Here is a Pussycats, number one, the end of everything. Kind of a zombie hooker type thing going on there. The plot uh, the, from Vault Comics, when this came out, uh, story, you know, was so-so, but the cover on the first one, really, really nice. I love that cover when I saw it, and I knew I had to have one, a couple. Uh, Deja Thoris. Of course, this is Perillo, I believe. Yeah, Perillo does wicked covers, so... You know, if you're going to buy covers on things like I'm doing now, Perillo is always going to be on that list. I can show, you know what, let's just finish off the PC box that I have right now. Tarot. Walking Dead. Really nice Michonne homage from Walking Dead 19, but this is, of course, just a homage book right there. This is Night Tears. This was a Poison Ivy one, but I just kind of love like, like the 50s, but there's like the head on the table. Really nice. Elvira. This is, of course, a Shining homage right there. The twins in the background. We love Elvira on this channel. Death Rage. Just kind of a cool, you know, cover. This is Basket Full of Heads, right there. I have one of these signed by uh, Clayton Crane. Really, really nice right there, though. Really nice uh, Alien vs. Predator 2. I'm a real big movie fan as well, and Saturday Night Fever is one of my favorite movies, and there is the Alien doing his best Saturday Night Fever impersonation. Jungle Comics, just kind of a you know guy fighting a gorilla, girl in bondage. You know, reminiscent of the, the 40s uh, jungle comics. Can't show that one. Vampires, kind of a homage like old EC pre code. Excuse me, drink a big thing of milk. Pre code horror right there, just like that. It's another tarot. Can't, definitely can't show that. Won't have that. So, there are the books that I have this past week that I've been able to go through and pull out some stuff for a personal collection. And the funny thing is, when we talked about this, personal collections can be anything that you want to collect. And I've gotten a couple, you know, contacts from viewers who, uh, they talk about, you know, oh, those books don't have a lot of value. Why are you wasting Mylar? Why are you wasting, you know, good boards and stuff on stuff like that? It's because I like it. I love looking at covers. I love the artwork. As long as it checks the boxes that I like, and these check the boxes that I like as it relates to like older books, anything from like, you know, uh, 70s, a lot of 70s I'm gonna find, you know, 60s, 70s, vintage, things like that, just to put it away because vintage is getting harder and harder to find in high grade. A lot of these vintage I showed you were in really high grade. And again, uh, it doesn't matter what I do or how I decide to collect things because it's my personal collection. That's why it's called a personal collection. Um, I, I get really surprised that some of the nasty comments that I get, uh, you know, or the, pr the private messages that I get where people are like, you know, that's not a private collection to be proud of. Uh, you know, that's not this, that's not that. You know what? I'm, I said from the beginning, it's not about the value. It's about what you enjoy, what makes you feel good. I can sit and pull a box out behind me and I can look at the comics and I can look at the covers and get tremendous enjoyment as it relates to a lot of the 70s stuff. You know, a lot of Howard the Duck. I'm gonna have a lot of Howard the Duck uh, a lot of like the Sergeant Rocks and stuff, because I remember going to the 7-Eleven, finding books, buying them, taking them home, and just being able to look at that. And I can, you know, look at those cover, look at those comic covers. And it takes me back to a really, really nice place, a really, really nice time where I really had a lot of enjoyment. I know a lot of you has expressed the same thing. So I'm going to keep showing these books. Uh, I'm going to keep showing them. I hope you keep watching them because I like doing it. I've kind of got a little bit of burst of energy doing this because, like I said, going through these things and finding things that give me enjoyment has lit a little bit of a fire under me to continue doing this. Not that I'm going to get back into it full board, but I have so many books that there can be a lot of videos coming up just showing stuff like this. And again, a collection or a hobby 
or something that you enjoy to do. It doesn't matter if people like it or not. It's what you like. You want to fly kites? Fly kites. You want to go to the bowling alley? Go to the bowling alley. You want to sit and look at comic book covers that some people might say, why are you doing that? It's the same reason I watch scary movies. It's the same reason I watch 70s slashers. Because I like them. Doesn't mean I want to go out there and slash people. It just means I enjoy those movies because I remember what a charge it gave me when I was younger watching that. And I just enjoy things that put you in a, a good frame of mind as it relates to things that make you just, in, that just brings back good memories. Hanging out with your friends, watching movies, going to the drive-in, watching these movies, things like that. Hanging out at comic book stores, uh, you know, and finding these things. So there's that. Um, again, I appreciate all the comments I'm getting. I'm getting, you know, every once in a while you get that nasty comment because a person's just jealous of what you have or just likes to throw, you know, smoke on your on your parade or whatever you want to say but 99 percent of these comments are positive they make me feel good i appreciate it and i'm going to keep doing that so i hope you keep watching again there'll be another video every week this one's a little later in the week but it's still within the week it's sunday still in the week so i'm keeping my promise to the viewers i'm going to keep doing these videos and again there's a lot coming up and so there's that so i hope you like the video but as always if you didn't, nothing I can do for you. Have a great, great day. I will see you next week, and we'll just keep moving forward with some great memories and great covers.